chat. You can join in on the conversation. Also, weigh in on our Facebook page. Live coverage here on C-SPAN. The House is expected to come back in momentarily. The Senate on C-SPAN 2. And throughout the day, more of your calls and comments as the developments continue here in Washington, D.C. The House will be in order. The prayer will be offered today by our guest chaplain, Reverend Kurt Gerhardt, St. Patrick's Episcopal Church, Washington, D.C. Sovereign Lord, who binds all people of every nation together as one people, in this era of our country when we are defined by our differences, and these differences cause a great chasm filled with distrust to exist between members of this House and between the branches of this Republic. Provide the wisdom to approach this session of the 113th United States Congress with a hermeneutic of generosity toward the motives of those with a differing philosophy of government. Open the hearts of the men and women elected to represent the American people so that fruitful conversations and compromises will allow this august body to serve the common good. Help us be mindful of our unity and bless this country and all nations and people now and forever. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House his approval thereof, pursuant to clause one of rule one, the journal stands approved. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina rise? Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Clause 1, Rule 1, I demand a vote on agreeing to the Speaker's approval of the journal. The question is on agreeing to the Speaker's approval of the journal. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Opinion of the Chair, the ayes have it. The journal stands approved. The gentleman from South Carolina. Mr. Speaker, I object to the vote on the grounds that a quorum is not present and make the point of order that a quorum is not present. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question are postponed. The Pledge of Allegiance today will be led by the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Wilson. Please join in. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Chair will entertain up to 15 requests for one-minute speeches on each side of the aisle. For what purpose the gentleman from Georgia rise? The House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, America is at a crossroads. We have a decision to make. Do we continue down the path of more government, more spending, more taxes, and more borrowing, or do we stand up and fight for the ideals promoted by those who founded our nation and drafted our Constitution? Make no mistake about it, the current government shutdown and the looming debt crisis is the result of this administration and this Senate's refusal to respect the honor and will of the American people. We must stand up for our principles that lead to prosperity for all Americans, less government, less spending, and the simple idea that delaying Obamacare for one year is fair for all Americans and is worth fighting for. I urge our House leadership and my colleagues to stand strong and to have what many of my Senate colleagues do not, the courage to oppose any deal that does not defund and delay Obamacare for all Americans now. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentleman from New York seek recognition? The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, if Congress does not meet its responsibilities, tomorrow the United States Treasury will have $31 billion in revenues and $52 billion in obligations. At that point, the United States would default with a profound impact on the global markets, which are structured on the premise that U.S. Treasury bonds are the safest asset in the world. The stock market will tank and interest rates will spike. Earlier this year, House Republicans passed a budget that spent $800 billion more than it took in. The logical consequence of that is to raise the debt ceiling. So for the other side to use the America's national credit 
as leverage is shameful is shameful as members protesting the closure of the World War II Memorial when they are the ones who voted to close it. Austerity and uncertainty kill economic growth. There's not an example in human history where an economy has grown itself out of recession through austerity. Moving from crisis to crisis, Congress has done the last three years has cost the American economy 900,000 jobs. Enough. Reject austerity and uncertainty and open the government and pass the debt limit bill. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask his consent to address the House for one minute revised and suspend my remarks. The gentleman's recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, last night I hosted a Teletown Hall with constituents across South Carolina's 2nd Congressional District. Apart from the vast majority calling for the President and Democrats in the Senate to negotiate with House Republicans to end the shutdown, an overwhelming number of constituents expressed concern about the administration's disastrous Obamacare rollout. During its first week, 9.47 million Americans visited the government website, but only 36,000 were able to complete the enrollment due to glitches. Former White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs has stated that this is, quote, excruciatingly embarrassing for the White House, and he hopes they fire some people who were in charge of making sure this thing was supposed to work, end of quote. Secretary Kathleen Sebelius has failed, spending hundreds of millions of dollars. House Republicans have warned that the unaffordable, unsustainable health care law is not ready. The President himself has admitted this by delaying key components. Congress must continue to work to replace it with a plan to preserve the doctor-patient relationship. In conclusion, God bless our troops, and we will never forget September 11th and the global war on terrorism. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentleman from Vermont seek recognition? Gentleman's recognized for one minute. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the House of Representatives has put this country through a spectacle these past few months. And it is a spectacle that was based on the proposition that it was legitimate to actually have a discussion about whether we had to pay our bills. Mercifully, we are on the threshold of a bipartisan agreement whereby, number one, the Affordable Care Act will be the law of the land. And the debate in the future is not about its repeal, it's about improving it. It's about facing the challenges of implementation. And number two, we are repudiating as legitimate tactics to get your way by any faction. It could be Democrats in the future. The use of tactics that do damage, threatening to default on our obligations and shutting down the government and inflicting pain on innocent people. So this struggle, it's damaged the institution but the principles that were at stake are now resolved. One, the Affordable Care Act is the law of the land. Two, you cannot use the tactic of shutdown or the tactic of default as a way to get your way on your agenda. I yield back. Jim yields back his time. What purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? I'd like to address the House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. The gentleman's recognized for one minute. Thank you very much. I rise today because we've got a problem in the United States of America. That is, we spend too much. Nobody on my side of the aisle says, let's not pay our bills, but we do say, just like every family does when their credit card bill comes and it's a little higher than they expect, well, let's see how we can maybe save some money, cut up the credit cards, maybe find a way to bring in some more money. And we can bring in more money with economic growth and economic development and things that are killing economic development, like the President's health care plan and excessive regulation must be stopped. We've got to stop spending and we've got to increase our revenue by growing our economy. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Jim yields back his time. What purpose does the gentlelady from Texas seek recognition? The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Over the past 16 days, many of us have risen to this floor and pleaded with our friends on the other side of the aisle and asked for mercy. Not mercy for our individual selves as members of Congress, but mercy for the American people. 800,000 over the past 16 days who lost their jobs and furloughs, $300 million a day that this nation has lost. This is the very answer to those who are suggesting that we're spending too much money. Mr. Speaker, we've lost money. But today I come humbly to plead with my friends to do as the chaplain mentioned this morning, have a generosity of spirit and recognize that we can come together. 
Let the voices of common sense recognize that states like Mississippi, Louisiana, Arizona, South Dakota, Missouri, Texas, New Mexico, Montana, Georgia, New York, Texas, and Wyoming, states that represent so many are losing so much because they get the most money from this nation. And then let us recognize Juanita Davis with a little Tanita, 10 days old, who is fearful that her WIC money, women, infant, and children money in the state of Texas is running out. I'm pleading that we come together with common General sense, time has expired. generosity of spirit. We can do this. General General time put this expired. bill on the president's desk. General Let's open the government expired. and lift the debt ceiling. General I yield back. Not in order. What purpose does a gentleman from Florida seek recognition? The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, once again, the GOP has threatened the full faith and credit of the United States. Rejecting all warnings from top economists and business leaders, some of my Republican colleagues have actually claimed that default would be good for our economy. But the truth is, when you spin the GOP wheel of misfortune, everyone loses. How would a GOP default that deprives seniors of Social Security checks be good for our economy? How would a GOP default that pits foreign investors against America's disabled veterans be good for our country? How could ruining the U.S. Treasury bond status as the world's safest asset and hiking interest rates on American families be good for our economy? How could stopping payments for the doctors and nurses who care for Medicare beneficiaries be good for our economy? Mr. Speaker, the answer is it can't be. The Treasury can't pick and choose which commitments to honor, nor should it have to. When you spin the GOP wheel of misfortune, there are only losers. Americans are disgusted when reckless games are played with our economic future. Be responsible. Finally, today, vote to reopen the government and to prevent a default. I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentleman from Maryland seek recognition? Ask me now to address the House for one minute to revise and extend my remarks. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, the President's health care plan is broken. Let me read from some of the letters and, and communications my office is getting from around my district. Mike and Pat in Queen Anne's County write, Mr. Harris, my daughter's health care premium just rose $648 a year thanks to the Affordable Care Act. Don't you or other Republicans give up the fight. Cindy from Talbot County writes, I've just discovered that I can't keep the medical insurance I've had for many years as it no longer exists thanks to Obamacare. Even though I'm 58 years old, I must pay for maternity benefits and pediatric dentistry when I have no child under 19. I get an increased deductible and a premium increase of $143 a month. What a mess that needs to be fixed and in a hurry. And finally, Lorraine from Queen Anne's County writes that, that uh, she called our office in tears. She was told by her insurer that her premium was just increased $256 a month. Her total payment that she and her husband now are going to pay is $956 a month. And her insurer told her that it went up because of Obamacare. Mr. Speaker, the President's health care plan is broken. I yield back the time. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentleman from Arizona seek recognition? Unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you on this, the 16th day of the shutdown, with just hours remaining until our nation defaults. The only way to end this crisis is for members on both sides of the aisle to come together and take bipartisan action today. We need to do our job and we must act responsibly. The Senate has a bipartisan plan and we should take it up immediately. At home and across the nation, the people we represent are facing harsh consequences, from the couple being denied a loan for their first home, to the Head Start kids whose school doors are shut, to the businesses with lost sales because national parks are closed, to the Border Patrol agent who can't pay his mortgage 
because his full paycheck hasn't come. Mr. Speaker, we must vote for common sense solutions. We must end this shutdown. We must restore the faith of the United, in the United States of America. And we must restore faith in this, the people's house. I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. What purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, we're all getting calls in our office as to the impact of Obamacare on average Americans. Here's an example. Just this morning, female, age 23, making below the D.C. poverty level per year. She currently pays $94 a month for her health care insurance. She went on the Obamacare web website just to find out what it would cost her. $250 a month, a $6,000 deductible. Folks... The impact of Obamacare on the average Americans is why Obamacare should be a part of this spending and debt debate here in Washington. I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. What purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. The gentleman from Rhode Island is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise with a sense of cautious optimism that we're nearing the end of this financial crisis. Our colleagues in the Senate are showing all of us that we can have disagreements on the issues and still work together to find common ground to tackle the challenges facing our nation. After so many weeks of this painful and unnecessary federal government shutdown, I urge all of my colleagues in the House to come together to support the common sense bipartisan Reed McConnell proposal emerging from the Senate. The past few weeks have taken away valuable time and attention from the many challenges facing our country. And once we reopen the government and avoid default, I hope that all of us will redirect our energy towards building consensus on solutions for comprehensive immigration reform, rebuilding our roads, bridges, and ports, growing our economy, reducing our debt in a responsible way, and most urgently, promoting job creation. I hope every member of this House will commit themselves to getting back to the work we were sent here to do and delivering real results for our constituents. I yield back the balance of my time. gentleman yields back his time. What purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask unanimous consent to address the House floor for one minute. The gentleman from California is recognized for one minute. Day number 16. Mr. Speaker, I'm cautiously optimistic that the shutdown ends today and we begin to restore the full faith and credit of our nation. Mr. Speaker, let's get this done. First, let's open the government today. Second, let's pay our bills and make sure that the world knows America always pays its bills. And most important, now's the time for us to come together and let's put a real budget together. A budget that brings Democrats and Republicans together the best ideas out of both parties and really begins to deal with the debt. A budget that begins to strengthen Social Security and Medicare for today's seniors, but also the next generation of seniors. And a budget that begins to create jobs and restores the middle class in America. Let's work together as Democrats and Republicans to put the American people first. We now have that opportunity. I yield back. The yields back his time. What purpose does the gentleman from Ohio seek recognition? The gentleman from Ohio is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to talk about the basic concept of fairness. In July, the Obama administration announced that it would be providing big business a one-year reprieve from having to comply with Obamacare. The White House indicated that this decision was made to give employers time to adjust to what the federal government was about to impose on them. Cover your employees with plans that have been blessed by Washington or be fined. It was a stunning move, a move some have said was an admission that either Obamacare wasn't ready for prime time or a political calculation that employers offloading their employees' health insurance would not be rewarded in the 2014 elections. The other possibility is that delaying the employer mandate was simply the fair thing to do. Mr. Speaker, I would ask the President that if the delay is good enough for big businesses, wouldn't it also be fair to delay the individual mandate that every American must comply with or be fined? And I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. What purpose does the gentleman from Minnesota seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, gentleman from Minnesota is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, the time is long overdue 
for us to uh, put an end to this uh, government shutdown and the tremendously harmful effects it's had on the people in our great nation. Uh, we need to get behind the Senate a reasonable, a bipartisan uh, plan that has been put together to open up our government, pay our bills, and put an end to, to this shutdown. Failure, by the way, means that five million disabled veterans won't receive their benefits in November. Failure means that 10 million Americans won't receive their Social Security checks in October, as of October 23rd, and 26 million more people would not get their Social Security checks on November 1st. Failure means $36,000 in additional interest on an average home loan and an additional $1,000 on an average a student loan. Failure means hundreds of thousands of public employees won't get paid with the businesses and the jobs and the people they serve uh, being at enormous risk. Mr. Speaker, the simple truth is that uh, we need to end this government shutdown and stop the harm and damage it's causing. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentlelady from Ohio seek recognition? The gentlelady is the House for one minute. recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, it appears a negotiated proposal that is bipartisan will come to a vote before this House today to end the government shutdown and avert a debt default. The American people surely are looking for reassurance that their government will offer them the security and dependability that they expect. Our citizens expect a nation that is confident and certain, not unsteady and uncertain. And with the expectation that this compromise from the Senate will now be brought before the House, the Dow today already is up 200 points. That is what America wants, a growing economy, job creation here at home, a government run efficiently as part of a larger whole in which we all have a stake. As our nation grows itself out of the deepest recession in modern history, the least any member can do is do no harm. A working bipartisan majority here in this House holds the power to govern this nation. All it needs is the will. Frankly, the world depends on the certainty of the U.S. dollar. Let's get back to regular order. America's challenge is to grow our economy and the jobs that go with it. Mr. Speaker, let's vote to end the shutdown today, pay our bills, and get America time back to work for the American people. Time is it's expired. overtime. What purpose does the gentleman from Kentucky time. seek recognition? The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, while I hope today is the last day of the senseless government shutdown, I want to share a part of a letter from one of my constituents, Lindsay Smith, a medical student and second lieutenant in the Air Force's Health Professions Scholarship Program. She writes, on October 15th, I woke up anxious. I took a shower, ate breakfast, and right before I left for class, I held my breath and checked my bank account. No deposit. I'm not getting paid during this ridiculous government shutdown game of chicken. Today I got to call my electric and cell phone providers to ask for an extension of my mid-month bills. Ensuring I eat has become the most impressing issue of my life. I wish more than anything that I could share my story with those members of Congress who are keeping this stupid shutdown charade going. The Affordable Care Act has passed all three levels of government. That's how democracy works. Because our elected representatives couldn't think about the big picture, and in light of the Republican Party agenda to block anything and everything coming out of the Oval Office, thousands of federal employees and non active duty military members are having to make the choice between eating and paying bills. The pettiness is messing up people's lives. The people who support and defend you, you should be endlessly ashamed of yourselves. Thank you, Lieutenant Smith, for letting us know and reminding us the impact of our actions on real lives. I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. What purpose does the gentlelady from New Hampshire seek recognition? to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. The gentlelady from New Hampshire is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In New Hampshire and across our country, we continue to see how congressional dysfunction is damaging our economy. The other day, I had a telephone town hall to talk with my constituents about how to end this gridlock. I spoke with Nelson in Columbia, New Hampshire, a veteran who fought for our freedom in World War II. All he asked is that Republicans and Democrats stop fighting with each other.
If we do not end this shutdown soon, on November 1st, veterans like Nelson will not receive over $6 billion in pension, education, and other benefits that they worked so hard and earned. If we do not act now, we will fail to pay our bills and default on all of our obligations. And this is obviously unacceptable to the American people and to our economy. Every day this shutdown continues is a day that Congress does not focus on growing the economy, fostering job creation, and expanding opportunity for the middle class. It's long past time for Republicans and Democrats to come together, and that's why I'm proud to be a founding member of United Solutions, a group of new members that are working together and will vote today to reopen our government, pay our bills, and move our country forward. The gentlelady's time has expired. What purpose does the gentlelady from Connecticut seek recognition? The gentlelady from Connecticut is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The shutdown is hurting families and businesses in my district and across the country, and it must end. Protein Sciences in Meriden is a prime example of the many cutting-edge businesses driving economic development in central Connecticut. Their mission is of critical importance to the entire nation. For the last 30 years, they've been developing and producing life-saving vaccines to treat and prevent a variety of diseases. The FDA previously approved Protein Sciences flu block vaccine for 18 to 49 year olds, calling it a quote, landmark in influenza vaccine history. But with FDA officials and employees now on furlough, Protein Sciences can't get approval for their revolutionary flu vaccines for Americans 50 years and older, increasing the chance that the vaccine won't be available for next year's flu season. The FDA and protein sciences can't fulfill their mission of saving lives because of this irresponsible shutdown. Mr. Speaker, let's come together to end the shutdown today, to give businesses in all of our districts certainty, and to ensure that businesses like protein sciences can get back to their work of keeping our families healthy and saving lives. I yield back my time. General ladies yields back her time. The chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker, a message from the President of the United States. Mr. Mr. Secretary. Speaker, I am directed by the President of the United States to deliver to the House of Representatives a message in writing. What purpose does a gentlelady from New York seek recognition? To address the House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. Gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, as the ranking member on the Joint Economic Committee, I would like to call your attention to this recent report. It is entitled, Ten Ways the Shutdown is Hurting Our Economy. Its findings are rather sobering. The report makes it clear that the shutdown acts as a serious drag on our economy. Economists have testified before the committee that three or four weeks of a shutdown would reduce the country's gross domestic product by 1.4 percentage points. We are now entering the third week. The shutdown harms not only federal workers, but also the, federal, the private sector. If it persists, it will reduce tourism revenue, cause contractors to lay off employees, the housing market will suffer, and public health services will feel its effects. The shutdown hurts everyone, from vulnerable mothers and children to ranchers, farmers, and agricultural exporters. We're close to ending this crisis, and as this JEC points out in this report, it could not end faster. It is hurting our economy. The lady yields back her time. What purpose does the gentleman from Illinois seek recognition? The gentleman from Illinois is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. $17 trillion is our national debt. $800 billion is how much we spend more than we take in. We pay $280 billion a year just on interest payments on the money that we borrow. Those are the real numbers, and that's why House Republicans have spent uh, much of these past two weeks talking about debt, deficits, and federal spending. House Republicans know what's driving America's debt. It's our reckless spending by legislators here in Washington. And the American people know this, too. A recent Bloomberg poll found that 61 percent of Americans think it is right to include spending cuts with a debt limit increase. 
This is not just a Republican problem. Vice President, Vice President Joe Biden, while serving in the Senate, protested against adding to America's debt without, quote, taking positive steps to slow its growth. That's what this debate has been about, Mr. Speaker, and we'll continue to work hard to make that happen. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back his time. What purpose does the gentlelady from Hawaii seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to the House. The gentlelady from Hawaii is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, day 16 of the shutdown, one day to the debt limit deadline. The question is, are we close to resolution? We have to stay the course. We have on October 5th, by unanimous vote of 407 to 0 in this House, passed retroactive pay for all federal workers. On October 8th, by a unanimous vote of 420 to 0 in this House, passed pay for the essential workers. The federal workers will be paid, so the people cannot be forced to suffer anymore. That's just common sense. And, Mr. Speaker, we must keep our course on the resolution on the default. An example in Hawaii, 217,678 seniors and disabled workers rely on Medicare. What would happen to them if a default would occur? We must stay our course, Mr. Speaker. We must have a resolution. We must vote for the people of this great nation. I yield back. Gentlelady yields back her time. What purpose does the gentlelady from New York seek recognition? Gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Day 16 of the Republican government shutdown. Children across the country are being turned away from Head Start educational services. Our small businesses are seeing a loss in demand for their services, and local economies are suffering. Americans are finding it harder to finance the purchase of a new home, placing a damper on the housing market, a cornerstone of our, nation, of our national economy. In New York alone, 50,000 workers are furloughed holding back on purchases that will help stimulate our local economy. Now we approach another deadline and the possible default of the federal debt. Allowing this to happen will be the height of Republican irresponsibility, causing havoc in our capital markets and costing American jobs. All of this could end today if our colleagues will simply allow a vote. Stop playing political games. We need to reopen the government and pay the bills Congress previously authorized. Mr. Speaker, the American people have seen enough. The time for talk is over. Let's vote to end this today. I yield back. Gentlelady yields back her time. Lays before the House a message. To the Congress of the United States. Section 202D of the National Emergencies Act, 50 United States Code, 1622D, provides for the automatic termination of a national emergency unless within 90 days prior to the anniversary date of its declaration, the President publishes in the Federal Register and transmits to the Congress a notice stating that the emergency is to, con to continue in effect beyond the anniversary date. In accordance with this provision, I have sent to the Federal Register for publication the enclosed notice stating that the national emergency with respect to significant narcotics traffickers centered in Columbia declared an executive order 12978 of October 21, 1995, is to continue in effect beyond October 21, 2013. The circumstances that led to the declaration on October 21, 1995 of a national emergency have not been resolved. The actions of significant narcotics traffickers centered in Colombia continue to pose an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security, foreign policy, and economy of the United States, and to cause an extreme level of violence, corruption, and harm in the United States and abroad. For these reasons, I have determined that it is necessary to continue the national emergency declared in Executive Order 12978 with respect to significant narcotics traffickers centered in Colombia. Signed, Barack Obama, the White House. Referred to the Committee on Foreign Affairs and ordered printed. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the House will stand in recess subject to the call of the chair.